when Jesus called Simon Peter, Jesus said to him, I will make you a fisher of men. And that's what Simon Peter was called for. How do we fish? How do we fish? In dirty water? How is my fishing? How is my fishing mission going on? And this mission is to be exercised in love. You know, I was so moved once when I read John chapter 17. John chapter 17, verse 12. That chapter 17, a chapter that speaks about love, a prayer for the apostles, and verse 12, 17, 12, Father, everyone you have given me, I have saved. No one is lost. No one you have given me, I have allowed to be lost, except the son of perdition. No one whom you have given me, I have lost. Who are the people God the Father gave to Jesus? Of course the apostles. He made sure they're not lost by washing the feet. And there are the others. The Samaritan woman whom God the Father sent to Jesus. Pilate, the Roman judge, whom God the Father sent to Jesus. The centurion, the soldiers, the woman caught in adultery, Zacchaeus, so goes the long list. Everyone who came to Jesus, everyone who came to Jesus, Jesus looked at them as people sent by the Father. Let us look into our ministry, the way we deal with others, the way we deal with others, the arguments and rivalries and, and ill feelings. We must make a very honest soul searching. Pilate, Pilate condemned Jesus. But Jesus did not condemn Pilate, no, no. Jesus had a good word even to Pilate, even to Pilate, that unjust, cruel judge and administrator, Jesus had a good word even to Pilate, sir, those who handed me over to you are perhaps of greater fault than you are. The soldiers, the soldiers, he never looked at them and cursed. And that's what all the criminals did. All the criminals did, not Jesus. And the centurion noted this. Centurion noted this. The good thief on the cross. Good thief. Ah, a grammatical mistake, right? Good thief. Because the two words don't go together. You can't put the two words together. If he's good, he's not a thief. If he's a thief, he's not good. And yet, beyond all grammatical usages, here is love flowing in. You shall be with me in paradise today. Even this thief was challenging Jesus, despising Jesus, saying words of contempt. But Jesus did not tell him, you, you deserve that, you deserve it, don't you? No, 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 no. That's what the other thief said. Jesus, come with me. Let's go. Let's go to paradise together. The centurion, finally the prayer, 
Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Forgive them. And the centurion was so moved, so moved, that he said, truly, this is the Son of God. Jesus looked at that centurion as the Son of the Father, whom the Father has sent to him. Jesus had to save him. The centurion, the pilot, the good thief, Jesus had to save them because every one of them is the Son of the Father, whom the Father had sent to him. He could not argue with them. He could not condemn them. He could not upset them. No, he had to save them. He had a mission for them. And finally, we are told, he cried aloud. Jesus cried aloud and surrendered his soul. That cry, that cry. Usually, we imagine it was a cry of agony, right? So tortured he was, wasn't he? Both, both mentally and physically, so tortured he was. And yet, Bible scholars will tell us, Bible scholars will tell us, the word used by John is not a cry of agony, but a cry of victory. Cry of victory. How does that come? Remember Jesus said, Father, it's all done. It's all consummated. The mission you entrusted with, with me, I have fulfilled. No one, John 17, 12, no one, you have given me, I have lost. The mission you entrusted with me is fulfilled. Everyone whom you gave me, I have gained for you. It is consummated. My mission is completed. A cry of victory. The word used is so meaningful. The Roman generals leading the battle from the front. When the battle is won, they will cry aloud. We have won. They will cry aloud. So that all the soldiers all the way to the last end may hear the victory cry. We have won. And Jesus cried aloud, Father, it's all done. It's all consummated. The mission is achieved. It's all done, a cry of victory. That's how Jesus died. When someone fights with me, when someone comes to argue with me, when someone keeps a grudge against me, for whatever reason, here, reason is not important. We're speaking of the heart, and that's what the word of God is always speaking about. The heart. When anyone comes to fight with me, anyone comes to, to gossip against me, to calumniate my name, anyone, I should know he is the son, the daughter, the father has sent to me. I have a mission. I need to be a fisher. I need to fish him, her, for the father. I can't afford to shout. I can't afford to be angry. I can't afford to keep an enmity. No, I have a mission. Because we are missionaries, having a mission to everyone who hurts us. Therefore, when someone keeps a hurt against me, could be he's the reason, she's the reason for that. That's not important. That's not important. It is Simon Peter who denied Jesus. That's not important. It was Judas who betrayed him. That's not important. For Jesus, it was his mission <coughs> to save them. It, it was he, Jesus, who knelt at their feet and washed their feet. My dear sisters and brothers, <coughs> 
we always argue from the point of view of reason he did this against me he must come and kneel at my feet no no my brother you go my bishop my superior my team leader <coughs> director of the retreat center my co-worker it is he it is she who did the mistake but the command is given to me the new commandment i should go and get reconciled the last wish of jesus my children i am going away but i want you to be my disciples everyone should know should think of me when you get reconciled with each other with everyone let's be able to take this mission serious this mission serious when we fight we have reasons but none of these reasons holds good when it comes to love and when i fight with the other when i keep an anger in my heart against anyone for whatever reason an anger a jealousy an enmity against anyone what am i doing ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 get angry do not commit a sin let not the sun set on your anger if you allow the sun to set on your anger what's the consequence you are giving opportunity for satan you are giving opportunity for satan i'm giving opportunity for satan anyone keeping any anger any hatred any hurt any enmity any jealousy against anyone he's opening his heart for satan we get possessed by satan why does he come in where does he come in he comes in to destroy to plunder to kill our ministries are plundered my dear sisters and brothers unfortunately we have no credibility we preach well but do we love well since we do not love well our relationships are strained we're not witnessing to jesus jesus is not projected in our ministry in our life let me give you an experience of mine i have said this before an experience i cherish in my heart <clears throat> some years ago i was the rector of a major seminary there were about 80 seminarians philosophers and theologians i was very young then and arrogant and proud i came back with my degrees from rome i was appointed the rector when i was appointed the rector at that young age all my classmates told me agustin that's my name you will be a rector for namesake but all the policies will be decided by others i asked him by whom oh there's an elder priest there in the seminary there was an elder priest a spiritual director a man with high influence with the authorities he would dictate terms to you you will be a rector for name's sake i felt challenged i said no i'm the one the rector the superior of the seminary rector of the seminary i call shots here i will affirm myself with that sort of a negative thinking 
I took up that, that post of the rector. And I made sure mine was the last word in everything. One day we were sitting at table. This elderly priest was there. The other priests were there, seminarians all sitting in the dining hall. This elderly priest made a comment. The rector should know he's too young. He must consult all of us when he makes policies. Otherwise, he would be wrong. And he said it in a loud voice. I felt very hurt. I felt challenged. He was questioning me, the authority. He's questioning the authority of the rector. I felt challenged. I could feel blood rushing into my brain. I hit the table and said, I am the rector here. If anyone wants not to agree with me, he can leave or I will make sure they would leave this place. I said it in all arrogance and anger. After I said it, I felt so happy. I said, Augustine, congratulations. You asserted your authority. Slowly, somewhere in the corner of my mind, I was feeling I did something wrong. <clears throat> That's not the way of authority hitting as Moses did, right? When Moses took up the mission, before taking up the mission from God, what Moses did first was to hit and kill, right? This is not the way of authority. I was beginning to feel sad. But then, I justified myself. I'm the rector. It's my responsibility to lead the seminary the way I thought fit. That's the way I thought in those days. But then after night prayers, it was about 11 o'clock. That's when usually I went to bed. By the time, by 10 o'clock, 10.30, all the lights are off in the seminary, all the lights. 11 o'clock, I removed my cassock. I put on the nightdress. I went to bed. I was lying there. I began to sweat. Unable to close my eyes. My heart began to beat faster. My conscience said to me, wrong wrong I committed a terrible sin that's not the way of exercising authority I could not lie down there on my on top of my nightdress I put on my cassock I went to the chapel the chapel is in the first floor all dark everywhere I went to the rector's kneeler. I knelt. I wept. I felt so guilty, so sinful. I'm not worthy of this authority. I opened my heart to God's activity, the activity of the love of the Holy Spirit. I felt convicted. I made a decision tomorrow. The first thing when I wake up is to go to him, that priest, and tell him I'm sorry. And get his blessing. I got up from my kneeler. I came to the center of the chapel to bow 
to the Holy Eucharist that's when from the other corner of the chapel I heard a little movement this elderly priest was there he came rushing to me he could not walk had a problem with his knee joints but he was hurrying he came and held my hands I could feel two drops of tears falling on my hands my hands were burned he said to me father I'm sorry I told him father please I'm sorry for this to hurt you I knelt before him asked his blessing he was reluctant but he blessed me then he knelt before me I felt so so sad he could not kneel but he knelt with all the pain on his legs I blessed him we parted the next day evening I went to him I prayed the whole day I went to him I told him father you know what a fool I am I want you to be my confessor and my spiritual director because you know my weakness you can guide me he did not agree oh no father he said you are the rector and superior I cannot be your spiritual director I told him I command you as the rector you need to be my confessor you need to be <clears throat> my spiritual director he held my hand tight he agreed till he died recently he has done a lot of good to me lot of good I always went to him to confess even when we were physically separated I was transferred from there to this place years ago I did not make a decision without consulting him had a lot of love for me I could feel it but with all that love he could reprimand me he could correct me I would agree because I knew this man loved this man prayed and in my ministry as a religious priest this this spiritual director was of immense help in my journey with the Lord and that night the blessed night I call it the blessed night that night I gained a spiritual director for the rest of my life that night God gave me a spiritual director you know my dear fathers brothers and sisters we should have blessed nights in religious life there's something called the great silence right no sisters after night prayer till the next day mass it's a very wrong concept there's a time we must be talking the word of God blessed nights let not this day pass by before we got reconciled we cannot continue this retreat with the hurt feeling in our hearts we cannot because our retreat will be a waste a waste if you cannot reach out and touch 
write in a sheet of paper today we need a paper a piece of paper write the names of everyone we should go and get reconciled don't argue get the word in your heart the warmth of love in your heart god is waiting to do great things with our life and our ministry let's all stand up holy spirit come and fill us you are the love the power of love the fire of love fall into my heart and burn away every hurt feeling every thought of division burn away everything that separates me from my god and from others burn away let your fire give me the power to go and get reconciled glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now never shall be world without end amen